everybody, and welcome to another episode of Dog Care on Air. I am Dr. Sarah Wooten, and I am your host. And I am here today with my very good friend, I'm so thankful, Stephen Saital. Uh, Stephen Saital is awesome. Um, let me tell you, there are so many reasons why you want to listen to this particular show today, because he's going to be telling you some of the most amazing things uh, about CBD oil. I don't know if you've heard about CBD oil, but this is the guy that you want to hear from on all things CBD oil in pets. So a little background. So welcome, Stephen. We're so glad you're here. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so excited that you're here. So let me tell you a little bit about this awesome guy, uh, friends. Um, he originally went to college to become a registered human nurse, right? But then most like veterinary professionals I know, he didn't enjoy working with humans as patients. So instead, he became a registered veterinary technician. And then he got so many other certifications. This guy has more letters after his name. I think you have a full alphabet after your name. But his focus has been on anesthesia and pain management in a research setting. But the way I know him in our industry is he built his uh, reputation on being an expert on cannabinoids, which are the active ingredients in CBD oil. He actually has started and participated in so many education platforms for veterinary professionals. He's also an editor for a textbook on cannabis therapy and so much more. But all that to say, I just wanted to give you an introduction on to how excited we are to have Stephen with us today and why we need to listen to this guy. Okay. All right. Hey, Stephen, I have questions for you. Do you have answers? Let's do it. Let's okay. Do it. All right. So um, before you got into the world of CBD oil, I know I gave our viewers a little background, but what exactly were you doing? Sure. So as you mentioned, kind of my specialties were anesthesia and pain management. Uh, and at the time, I was working at a specialty clinic. So uh, a veterinary practice that has surgeons and internal medicine specialists and oncologists. And I was living in the San Francisco Bay Area. And much like different parts of Colorado, that's a very uh, progressive part of the country. And people are very friendly when it comes to cannabis use, in particular marijuana, which falls under this umbrella of cannabis, and um, had quite a few clients come in and want to use these particular products, in particular CBD products, on their pet. Uh, in particular, those pets that maybe had cancer, uh, they were more terminal, so they were in the end stages of their disease process, which is the most challenging part as a pet owner. Um, and, uh, you know, they would come in and ask questions. And I honestly had no idea about any of the, the things when it came to cannabis other than my own personal recreational use all, or medicinal use. And um, so I just, I started uh, going on a deep research dive looking for some of the evidence, the scientific peer-reviewed papers on the utility of these molecules from this plant for animals. And, you know, in the veterinary profession, we had been told that there is no research. And to my surprise, there's lots and lots of research on animals using molecules like CBD and uh, started putting that together. And it just kind of snowballed uh, and started having these conversations with pet owners about using these products safely for their terminal pet. And once I saw the really good success there, I said, you know what? this can be used on animals that maybe aren't necessarily going to die soon on these non-terminal animals, maybe these chronically painful animals, maybe these, these epileptic patients. And so again, went back to the research, found more evidence and had these kind of sly conversations with pet owners in the parking lot. Cause at the time it wasn't necessarily legal. Um, and it again, just snowballed from there. And then I got picked up, uh, from some, uh, different hemp companies and uh, got involved in research and started developing content uh, on this topic. And it's so funny the way that you got introduced to CBD oil because <clears throat> it's very similar to my story. I live in Colorado, which is obviously, you know, landmark for legalizing recreational marijuana use. But I remember back in, I think it was like 
2014, where I was working uh, as an associate veterinarian in Greeley, Colorado, and I had a seizure patient, a dog, and I had I asked the client, "How's it? How is it going? Are you having any seizures?" And the client was like, "Nope." no seizures whatsoever. And I said, okay, well, I see that you haven't refilled your medication, your anti-seizure medication for a long time. And he said, yeah, actually I discontinued that two years ago. I said, well, what are you doing to control the seizures? And he like looked this way and he looked that way, right? Cause it wasn't legal back then. He goes, I'm using CBD oil. And I was like, what? So I got the same kind of introduction, like that the pet owners taught me. And then somebody like you came along and you were brave enough to talk about it. So who do you normally teach uh, your information and research to? Yeah, so most of the platforms I've been involved with or are involved with, uh, I'm teaching other veterinary professionals, whether that's veterinary technicians uh, in practice, but more commonly veterinarians. You know, uh, it's, it's annoying that we as veterinary professionals didn't learn about this whole receptor system that we have in our body and the potential for plant-based medicines for use in, in animals when we've known about this stuff for 30 plus years. Uh, so a majority of it is veterinary professionals with a large, a large following of veterinarians. Okay, so here's the question. Here's the million dollar question that I know everybody is wanting to know right now. Is CBD oil marijuana? No, it's not. Well, it can be. Oh my gosh, this answer is so nuanced. So, <laughs> so I mentioned the word cannabis before. So cannabis is the genus of plants. So that's like this big umbrella. That's like this parent plant, right? Just like we say canine, that can mean wolves or that can mean domesticated uh, dog breeds that we have in our home. So cannabis is like saying canine. And then under it, we have our more controlled or our more domesticated species known as hemp, like our, our domesticated dog breeds, right? And then we have our more wild and crazy uh, version of that same plant known as marijuana with lots of THC in it. Is this analogy work? I think that's working, right? Perfect. Okay. So cannabis is this big thing. Then we have hemp and marijuana. And so CBD can come from hemp or marijuana. It just so happens that the hemp plant has a lot more CBD in it than the marijuana plant. Um, and then we have this other category of hybrids where they're mixing uh, hemp and marijuana or, or different strains, like people like to call them, even though that's technically not the correct term. Uh, but people mix these things to make uh, different profiles of different what are called phytocannabinoids, so things like CBD in these plants. So when it comes to, so we all, I don't know if pet you guys watching this know, but THC, which is the active ingredient in cannabis, marijuana, is toxic to dogs. So when a pet owner, and we haven't even talked about what people can use CBD oil for, but, and we'll get there, but when a pet owner is looking for products, do they want products for their pets that come from marijuana or from hemp or something else? That's a, that's a great question. And I think the, the answer really depends on what disease that the, the parents, the pet parents are trying to uh, get under control. And it, it largely depends on the experience of the veterinarian that they're talking to. So I, I think one thing that all pet parents should understand is marijuana, even in the legal states, is illegal at the federal level. So it's going to be difficult to find a veterinarian that's going to be open and, and willing to discuss a federally illegal product with a pet parent because that puts them at, at legal risk, which is understandable. But there are veterinarians out there and veterinary cannabis counselors like myself that are comfortable talking about marijuana use in, with pet parents. And you need a really skilled and experienced veterinary professional to have those conversations with THC because, or with marijuana because of the THC. Just because, as you mentioned, you can see some intoxicating effects, which are unpleasant for the animal and certainly for, for the owner. Um, when it comes to hemp products, uh, that's a little bit different. So hemp is legal federally, and we can have those discussions more openly. Um, and there's definitely less, less potential for intoxication or some of those, those negative adverse events. So um, where would a pet parent find a veterinarian who could be a counselor on this? Is there an online registry or anything like that? 
There is not an online registry so far. There are, there are a couple of groups um, out there. There's a Canadian group and then there's um, a, a domestic group uh, for the United States uh, practitioners as far as getting education. Um, so there is a, a website called veterinarycannabis.org and that's run by Dr. Kassara Andre who is experienced with marijuana use uh, in animals and pet parents can go there. Uh, pet parents are more than welcome to reach out to me through my website. Um, but there are practitioners out there. You just have to dig a little bit. Okay. So what is going, what is going on? Why, why do you love this? What is going on in the body and what can CBD oil do for dogs? Sure. So there is this system in your body and it's known as the endocannabinoid system. And it, it's two of these little receptors. If you think of them like a lock, we also have a key that our body produces. And sometimes our body is not able to make enough of this key to sit in that receptor. And when you turn on receptors, these receptors have different physiological responsibilities. And the endocannabinoid system in general is, is supposed to maintain homeostasis, so a balance within the body altogether. And we know that with different disease processes, this balance can get thrown out of whack. And then we have other symptoms, and then we have other symptoms from those symptoms, and it just compounds and makes things worse. So if your body is not able to make enough of these, these keys for this lock, this receptor, then we want to supplement the body with things like CBD. And so that's kind of the whole principle of why people are wanting to use things like CBD, little amounts of THC, other phytocannabinoids, things maybe they've heard like CBG, maybe they've heard of things like CBN. There's, a, there's hundreds of them out there. Uh, so there's a lot of disease processes that researchers have found where the body is not producing a specific type of key for that, that specific disease. And so with supplementation, we can hopefully help the body uh, uh, boost the endocannabinoid system in producing these keys for those receptors. So what kind of disease processes could pet parents look into CBD oil to help their pets? Sure, so a lot of that is mirroring what we're seeing with uh, pet owners. So pain is, is probably one of the top ones. And we have two efficacy studies now uh, showing that CBD dramatically decreases pain scores in animals with osteoarthritis. So that's a very, very common uh, symptom that, that pet owners want to use these products for. The other one is certainly anxiety. Um, and anxiety is tricky because uh, even the behaviorists, the veterinary specialists in behavior, have a difficult time managing these cases. Uh, you know, we always want to try to do behavior modification. And then sometimes we have to throw supplements or pharmaceuticals at the, the pet as well. Um, and finding that perfect balance can be tricky, but it's really nice when we have a plant-based option because one, we have less uh, uh, chance of an adverse reaction. So negative behavioral changes, right? And certainly toxicity and then having to have a pharmaceutical in home. Uh, but we're still kind of discovering what dose is going to be appropriate for chronic anxiety. So if you have like that little chihuahua that's always anxious and shaking and kind of scared of everything versus what's called acute anxiety, uh, like my dog being scared of the windstorm that I'm in right now or a thunderstorm. So it seems like the dosing is going to be a little bit different for chronic and acute uh, conditions. And then certainly things like epilepsy, we had one pilot study come out, um, I think last year out of Colorado State University, showing some really good promise there, and then certainly cancer or cancer-related symptoms. And is there any um, side effects that pet owners should be aware of? Absolutely. So anything that we give, whether it's a natural product, whether it's plant-based, if it is going to be effective in your body, we should always expect that at certain dosages, there may be negative side effects or an animal may not respond favorably even to recommended doses, right? So if it's not, if there are no potential for uh, negative side effects, then that product is not working whatsoever. So I think pet owners need to be very cautious with those, those uh, companies that are saying there are no negative side effects. Well, if there are no negative side effects, a product is probably not going to be working, period. So with safe use, we can mitigate some of those negative side effects. 
the most common side effects that we see, again, depending on the dose, is lethargy, which may or may not be a good or a bad thing if the, the patient is sleeping more because maybe you're taking that edge off so that they can sleep more comfortably. Maybe they were chronically uncomfortable and now we've managed that with the CBD oil, right? Um, the other thing that we might see is some GI upset. So depending on, again, the dose and the product profile and, and the carrier oil, the type of oil that the CBD is, is suspended in, we might see some vomiting, some diarrhea, maybe some loose stool. And then we should always be concerned about what's called drug to drug interaction. If your pet is on another medication, will that medication interfere with what the CBD is doing or vice versa? Typically, the most common side effects we see with those types of drug interactions are more sleepiness. So are there any, um, where could pet parents go to find, a, is there anywhere for them to go to find a list of medications that interfere, that CBD oil could be interfering with that they wouldn't want to give their pet CBD oil if their pet was on a certain medication? Yeah, there isn't a defined list yet, but there is a, a website called Project CBD, and they have a really nice, huge document of potential drugs uh, where CBD can be contraindicated in or have this drug-to-drug -drug interaction. With that said, there are a few drugs that I can list here that, that pet parents should be aware of or, or um, maybe anticipate some different reactions, and, and you may have to play with the dose a little bit with your veterinarian of the pharmaceutical drug or the CBD product. And the most common ones we see more lethargy with is uh, in combination with phenobarbital, which is a common anti-seizure medication, uh, trazodone, which is a common uh, behavioral drug, gabapentin, which is a common chronic pain drug. Oftentimes we can decrease all of these dosages of these drugs when you add CBD. Uh, and then uh, certainly things like tramadol. Um, we can see some, some more sleepiness. Now there is a, a class of drugs that I really want to stress to pet owners, we need to be particularly cautious with uh, when mixing the two, and that's, that's called a, a benzodiazepine. So those are drugs like Valium or Xanax, right? So if your pet is on Valium or Xanax, we can see that animal act kind of stoned um, <laughs> when the, the two drugs are mixed together. And typically, I would say give a quarter of the dose of the CBD product or give a quarter of the dose of the, the Xanax or the, the Valium, and you, you will mitigate some of those negative side effects. So it, just so we're clear, so let's clarify. It seems like CBD oil is a good what we call adjunct therapy to traditional therapies that are already being prescribed. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so an adjunct is a great way to start with a CBD product. Um, is, or uh, you can use a CBD product by itself, especially for those dogs that maybe don't tolerate non steroidal anti-inflammatories very well. So those things like carprofen, right? I love those drugs, but sometimes they just don't sit well with animals. And so CBD might be something to try instead. But as you said, it's a great adjunct drunk. Uh, sorry, <laughs> that totally came out wrong. Adjunct <laughs> drug. Um, uh, two common medications. And it's pet parents love it because they can oftentimes decrease that traditional pharmaceutical drug. But we should always do this when discussing it with your veterinarian. Very good disclaimer. Always uh, change your drug dosages only yes. under your veterinarian's recommendations. And just so everybody's watching, adjunct is just a doctory term that we use to, um, that's what we call medications or supplements or therapies that we add on top of what you're doing already. So say your dog is under treatment for arthritis with one of the drugs that Steven mentioned, carprofen, which is also called Rimadyl. Um, and so CBD, if you wanted to try that as well, would be an adjunct therapy, an additional therapy on top of that, which it would be nice if you'd be able to reduce the dosage of carprofen, right? Exactly. So Steven, um, so if a pet parent's like, oh, this seems interesting, I'd really like to look into this for my, my dog, how do you, what would be a good way to start a conversation with your veterinarian and how do you know if your veterinarian is willing to work with you on this? 
I think the fact of the matter right now is because veterinarians are still maybe a little bit intimidated by some of the, the stickiness of the law uh, or they don't understand the law fully, I think it's fair to just ask them, hey, what is your comfort level with discussing these products with me? And if they're uncomfortable, I think we should respect that, but then maybe reach out to the other resources like veterinarycannabis.org or reaching out to me through my website. I'm, I'm happy to have those conversations with anybody. Um, and then the other thing that pet parents can do is really arm themselves with, with uh, documentation for a specific product that they're looking at. Um, any reputable company should be able to provide the pet parent or the veterinarian with a document called a certificate of analysis. And this should be, this should be done by a third party lab that is accredited and on the certificate of analysis, there should be a, what's called a cannabinoid profile. So it'll show you how much CBD is in there, how much THC is in there, if any, and it'll give the concentration. So how many milligrams is in there per milliliter? And that's really, really critical for the veterinarian to be able to help you with dosing for your pet. And then we should also have a terpene profile. So that's the smelly part of the cannabis or the, the hemp or marijuana plant. So if you smell it, you're like, whoa, what is that? That's not the THC. That's not the CBD. Those are called the terpenes. And those terpenes also have some therapeutic benefits. So we, I, I personally like to see those in there. And then the scary part, which is uh, something that I think we'll talk about in a second, is, is the possibility of contaminants being in these products. So contaminants being like pesticides and fungicides, heavy metals. So things like lead and mercury and arsenic and, and cadmium, like all these things that we don't necessarily want to be ingesting ourselves and certainly don't want to be giving to our pet. And then we want to look for other uh, pathogenic uh, bacteria. So things like E. coli or salmonella in these products. So a really good certificate of analysis should be able to provide you with all of that information. And if the company is unwilling to give that, then I would not buy the product. That's a really great recommendation because there are so many products out there these days. And I, and I think both pet parents and veterinarians are getting a bit overwhelmed just yep. because something says it's got CBD oil in it doesn't mean it's actually going to provide any kind of health benefit to this to this dog. Exactly. Uh, I recently um, was part of a, a study that was published a few weeks ago where we, we pulled 30 veterinary products uh, from the shelf and then we tested it at a third party lab. And then we took all of this information together and found that a good percentage of the companies don't have in the bottle what is on the label. And a couple of the companies had such high levels of lead in them they would be deemed unsafe for consumption by the federal government. So it is critical that we are at least getting this certificate of analysis so we can actually see what's in this product. And that certificate of analysis should have a batch number on it that matches the batch of the product that you bought. So I, I know what you're probably gonna say already, but is there any way to see that study? <laughs> Oh, absolutely. So I, I, uh, I'll give you the link so pet parents can pull it up. Steven, you are the best. And I think that's amazing because people, when they're going to buy these products for their pets, they have the best intentions and they're spending a decent amount of money on them. And it would be heartbreaking to think that what you're buying for your pet to help your pet is actually possibly harming your pet. So exactly. This is amazing. Thank you so much. I'd love to get that link and hopefully we'll be able to get that up on the Dog Care on Air website so that people can make informed decisions. So uh, let's see, what other questions do I have for you? Oh, I know. Can you uh, give pet parents, dog owners in particular, recommended dosages for CBD? Sure. So I think when we talk about dosages, again, I can't stress enough that we should be having these conversations with a veterinary professional or hopefully your veterinarian uh, and fully disclose all the other medications that your, the pet is going to be on. And uh, the, the general dosages uh, are anywhere between what's, what's um, known as a half milligram per kilogram all the way up to two milligrams per kilogram. 
There are some cases where we may go above that two milligram per kilogram dosing. Um, but those are, those are the, really the cases where I really want the veterinarian or some sort of trained veterinary professional to be involved because at those higher dosages is when we start to see some more uh, uh, reactions from the patient, whether good or bad. <clears throat> So CBD products are widely available in the United States. I mean, you can buy them in stores, you can buy them in veterinary hospitals, you can buy them online. Uh, what about for people who are watching this who are from Canada? Any recommendations from, for them? <laughs> Poor Canadians. I was, I, <laughs> I was uh, in uh, early April, I think, I was, I was in Canada speaking at a veterinary conference on this topic. And, um, you know, coming from the states i can make all these recommendations and uh that's not as easy in canada so i i don't have a good source for those products in canada unfortunately i, I feel really guilty <laughs> well stay tuned i mean just like everything else this situation is probably rapidly evolving so um awesome well steven this has been amazingly helpful to so many people. I can't tell you how much I am so grateful that you took time out of your super busy schedule because everybody wants to hear from you to talk to our audience. My pleasure. So yeah, um, check, check the website, check the links beneath this video to get the information that you need on this product. And who knows, maybe you are, maybe this introduced you to something that you didn't know about a new, new type of therapy that's out there that could help your pet in a plant-based, uh, healthy way. So thank you again, Stephen. Uh, we will see you guys. We'll see everybody again later. I'm Dr. Sarah Wooten, and this is Dog Care in Air. Thanks for checking out our content. If you'd like to see more, please visit our website at dogcareandair.com or any of our social media channels where we're uploading new content on a daily basis. Look for links in the description. And remember, dogs do so much for us. Learn to do the best for them.